Hi everyone, Ian here. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at whether or not it's possible to code on the Steam Deck. Now, if you've got a Steam Deck, you're probably aware that you can use it as a fully featured desktop. It is itself a um, PC under the hood and um, comes with a full install of Arch Linux, which SteamOS is based upon. And I, as a developer, want to know whether or not I can use it as a viable alternative to a Linux machine. So today we're gonna to be looking at whether or not it's, able, it's possible to install Python, whether or not we're able to do some proper development in an IDE, and um, whether or not it's gonna be suitable for somebody starting out in coding. And I have this set up in a fairly crazy fashion. We've got a rat's nest of cables here. We've got a very interesting thing that I've uh, picked up from a kitchen to hold this in place. Um, but yeah, we're going to jump right over onto the Steam Deck and get started on trying to use some Python. So yeah, here we are uh, on the desktop. Um, I can, uh, it is just a Standard Arch inst uh, install, as you much expect on a Linux desktop. If you're familiar with this sort of thing, you're going to understand your way around this. Um, I'm not an Arch user myself. I'm mainly familiar with Ubuntu, but um, the basics here are pretty much the same. And um, we're going to be hopefully trying to run a Python script, trying to... Um, get an IDE set up and trying to install Docker. So those are the things that I kind of wanted to cover because those seem like some core things that you want to do. And if you're probably going to go any further than that, you probably want a more de something more dedicated um, set up. So yeah, um, first of all, let's check out what we've got in the way of Python. So I'm going to pull up the console um, and I'm going to take a look. So the Steam Deck has a um, user set up, which is deck, as you can see here. But that de that user has no password set up, and so it has complete access to everything. You can set a password. So we're going to go through a different process here of installing stuff in that we're going to use Brew. Um, the problem with installing packages and things on the Steam Deck is that uh, with every update of Steam OS that comes out, it will wipe out anything that is not under the default user uh, of Deck um, and it will trash everything that we've installed. That's not going to be much use to us as uh, developers. We want a system that we can actually use. So I'm going to try and install Homebrew on this which will install in the user partition. So I'm going to hit the homebrew uh, website for the, which is brew.sh, I believe. And homebrew can actually be installed. You might not be aware because as a Mac user, you probably just use it on Mac. Um, it can be installed on either Mac or Linux systems. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And it is just this command. You should always inspect commands before you go ahead and use them. I am not going to. I'm just literally going to paste it in. Okay, so it seems like that you do actually need to set a password. I'm going to come out of this and let's clear that down. So the first thing we're going to need to do then is set a password for this user. So let's do that. Um... Okay, and then we can go ahead and call this. Okay, well, what I read on this originally was that um, you can see here the installation script stores homebrew to Linux brew using sudo if possible. I didn't really want to use sudo because um, it was modifying the password for the default user, but we've gone ahead and done that anyway. Um, and it would have done it into the home directory of the brew user, sorry, the deck user um, at Linux Brew otherwise. So it asked me to set a password and I've gone ahead and did that. Let's go ahead and install this and see what happens. Now the reason we're doing this is because any packages that we install um, through Pacman, the package manager for Arch, um, is going to give us, is going to are going to be wiped out later down the line if we ever update the OS, which is 
happens frequently and we don't want that to happen. Wow, this is slow, isn't it? This is my uh, Wi-Fi connection out here just in the middle of nowhere in the back room. So we're going to be installing Python, potentially Py well, we're going to get PyEnvin there as well and something like pipenv for Poetry in order to manage packages. Um, this is what I do on my other systems as well. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see uh, that I've done it on my Mac and I've also done it on my, on my Linux box. I did it on a Framework when I had one of them. So one thing to say here is that you are going to need a external mouse and keyboard because it would just not be viable to do this on the screen in the Steam Deck. It is too small and typing everything in is just going to be ridiculous. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is that we can actually see that Python is already installed. We've got Python 3.10. So one of the first things we could do is, you know, we can actually um, do simple stuff in uh, Python there. Oh man, the keyboard layout is different <laughs> to what I'm used to. I... So I'm guessing this is using a US layout. Um, that is something that I will need to change. And so yeah, we can, like the easiest thing to do would be to run Python from uh, within the console. Okay, let's run, uh, we've now finished, so we can run these two commands. And then we should have brew there. There we go, cool. So we've confirmed that we've got Python on there, then we can run it. So the thing I want to do is install pyenv so that I can actually manage um, Python installations if I were to install other versions of Python. Let's see if we can do that. And I'm not going to mess with the um, default Python version because I figure that, I don't know, I, I don't really want to um, change the defaults on there at the minute. But I'll see if I can install a different version. So the one that was on there is 3.10.2. Let me check what the most recent version of Python is. Uh, most recent is 3.10.8. So let's see if we can install 3.10.8. Oh yeah, and the other thing to say here is that I did update SteamOS today. So I've got the latest version of SteamOS. Um, I'll have to confirm after a new release comes out that the changes, what I'm doing here, doesn't get knocked out by SteamOS. So we shall see. Okay. So do we have Python? Ooh, okay. So I've now I've forgotten. I think it was 3.10.8, was it? Let's see. Okay, it doesn't have 3.10.8, so let's try 3.10.7. I suppose I could have figured that out if I'd actually uh, just tried to use that version. <laughs> okay, why is that failing? Cannot run C compile programs. Okay, does that mean that we can't? I'm guessing there's not a release available for this platform. Okay, well, that means that uh, that's, that's covered. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is, can I actually install, can you do Docker? Which is brew install, let's have a look. Let's just try Docker, is it docker.io, something like that. Okay, so how far is this going to get? Okay, Docker. Okay, cool. Um, one other thing that I'd like to install is an IDE. So, um, if we go through the Discover thing here. So this is like our app store. I believe this is using Flatpak apps. Um, whether or not there's a nicer app store than this, I do not know. But I believe that Visual... Studio 
is in here. Let's have a look. There you go. Let's install that. The other thing I noticed with this is that it does actually have gits on there already. Okay. So if we get and jump back into terminal and we type git, it's already installed. Um, I'm not going to go through the setting up the SSH keys and GPG like I've done on other systems here because that seems a little overkill for this video. I'm going to have to get a better interconnection out here. It is so slow. And it, it's just because of where I am in the house, really. It's, uh, it's very thick walls out the back here. Okay, so that's apparently installed. Let's see if you can find it. Okay, cool. So we've got something familiar on here that we can use now, which is nice. Let's open a folder. Oh, flat pack warning. Okay, so <laughs> it looks like it's open. But it is not restricted mode is intended for safe code browsing trust this window to enable all features okay so how do i do that in not actually let me do it okay, let me try again oh, let's trust them and then there's a warning you're running an unofficial flat pack version of visual studio code okay well that is what it is. Okay, let's open a folder. Oh, right, okay. So before I was actually opening a folder, it just conveniently opens it behind the window that I'm looking at. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, you get some quirks on it being a Linux distro. I'm going to just open home documents. I trust all the authors. Let's do that. Okay, let's create a folder there that's just called dev. And a new folder. In fact, let's create a new file. Dev.py. Print. Hello. Oh, man. Keyboard's throwing me out. Okay, so let's, let's will this now pull up a terminal? Yeah, cool. Then we're in dev. So if we do Python test, cool. Uh, so yeah, we can run some Python. Let's see if it allows us to install Python extensions. Which it does seem to be doing, which is nice. Cool, done. Okay, so we're getting nice, some definitions and things coming up, so that's handy. Okay, other thing I'd like to look at doing is getting a, something to manage um, Python environments. Now, does brew have pipenv? Yes. Or at least that looks like it does. So it's probably also worth just running a Docker container just to confirm that we can uh, get something. Okay, let's just run that. Just a random container off the internet. I'm sure that's fine. Let's have a look at pipenv. Cool. Oh, yeah, we were putting stuff in documents there, which is probably not where you want to keep it. Um, let's do pip and install requests. What? I thought that said 3108 there, which is interesting, given that we've got 310. So we do pip and run python test.py. 
so okay so pfm is running that if we have a look at the pitfall dot log that's just saying 310 i don't know why it said 3108 when it popped up So that's created a virtual environment for us that we're able to use. Um, let's jump back to console. Sorry, Visual Studio Code. So if we do import requests. Now I'm hoping that's legit code. Uh, oh, okay. So in there, we've not got it. Does it run here? Just give me a 200, but I'm going to get a JSON decoder for some reason. Oh, it's because it's not JSON, you absolute muppet. Can you Let's just have a look at the headers? Okay, cool. It's making requests and receiving them through requests. So we're able to install packages through a virtual environment. We are able to run scripts. Can we run this Docker container? Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we're still getting Docker not found there for some reason. Oh, well now we're getting that Brew isn't found either. So presumably they haven't been persisted in the bash RC. So a little bit of time has passed. Um, you can tell from the desktop things are a little bit different. Um, and we can see from the bash RC that we haven't actually got anything in there from the commands that we were running before. It, equally, our brew commands, our pipm, like everything that would appear in a RC file, it doesn't exist. So I'm gonna continue by trying to add that first thing and do though is switch this keyboard layout because that is really not that handy okay so hopefully let's apply that and see okay so my keys are the right way around that's a good start anyway so if we source that okay so sourcing the bash profile sorts out brew. Does it sort out pifenv? Yes, it does. Does it sort out pyenv? Yes, it does. Okay, so we're having source problems with that bash profile. So finally, after 10 minutes of digging around, um, I've decided to basically proceed by adding this to the bash RC. So you can see if we go into nano and look at the bash RC now, the command for brew is just before this return. Now, why it's not executing the bash profile, I don't know on the deck, um, but I put it in here to uh, just basically get moving and make sure it's the default. So now when we pull up the console, and we run brew, we get brew and we also get pipm, etc. So, yeah, it's a weird quirk that it doesn't seem to be executing the bash profile as I'd expect, um, but that's fine for now. In fact, let's actually um, go back to Docker. And so, we've got Docker there, and I wanted to run a test image. Okay, so it's literally docker run hello world and help if that was just on their front home page, but there you go. Okay, so it may well be that docker isn't actually installed. Let's have uh, a 
look on Bruin, see if we can find it. So this is saying that we do not have the Docker Daemon installed, or at least it can't connect to it. Okay, so the official kind of Docker install on Arch is going the Pac-Man route, which we don't want to do because that's going to install it under the main kind of slash path directory, so the root path like that. Why this isn't installed Docker, I don't really know because it seems to have underneath it hasn't installed the engine it seems to be not started and uh, I don't really know what it's got here so let's have a look and see what it thinks it is docker version 2010 20 okay so you think okay so there's people saying that they're unable this is all on reddit so you can have a look yourself but yeah I think I'm going to call this and say that we are not having much success with docker if I get this working, I may come back to it, but um, it does not look like that that's something that we're able to use. But as we have shown, it is possible to develop using Python on here. We've got, as I said before, a de nice dev environment set up. Let's see if Brew is in here now. Okay, so again, whatever we're using for the part for the shell here isn't sourcing brew and pipem which is interesting okay so i think i may have found the problem here so there's a setting terminal integrated default profile um and it's set to null which is interesting it says it will be ignored if terminal integrated shell linux or terminal integrated shell args is set i'm gonna set this to bash and see if it does anything okay so we've got bash linux what are you typing that in for you crazy man and brew now works okay that's annoying and i'm glad that i found the setting so you can um modify the setting and get your pipm and everything within the terminal there so it means that we can run the uh, python script that we had before and so many it's taken a while to make the request but again i think it's probably my connection here Okay, cool. It seems to run fast outside. Uh, let's try it again, see if it runs any faster there. I mean, to be honest, that took ages there. It's seemingly faster here. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you found that valuable. Um, you can see that it is very possible to install uh, Python on a Steam Deck, it is possible to set up environments, it is possible to use IDEs, um, and it is possible to code, albeit at a fairly basic level. We've not been able to run Docker, but um, I'm sh there's probably a way around it, it's just that I, it, we've not been able to do it in this uh, particular tutorial. Hopefully when we go to upgrade the next version of SteamOS, because everything is installed in our user, sorry, in our home partition, um, we will not get any of those settings wiped out as well so yeah i hope you enjoyed the video i will be doing more stuff with the steam deck in the future and i look forward to seeing you soon all right bye for now